When I first became aware of uh, the value that public adjusters offer to the marketplace, I, I really didn't even know what a public adjuster was. Uh, at the time, I was an EMT, a New Jersey EMT, uh, you know, working in an ambulance and had no clue really what a public adjuster was until I had a relative that had an issue with their home. They had a couple of uh, shingles that were blown off their roof and uh, they went through their friendly uh, insurance company customer service made their claim or, or or started the claim process they had a claims adjuster come to their house and uh, survey the damage and uh, write a report or whatever it is that they do right and three to four weeks or five weeks later they got a letter in the mail with a check and it was a check for fifty eight dollars and the letter said well, uh, you know, and I'm not saying this verbatim, I'm just, you know, paraphrasing. The letter said, here's, you know, here's what we calculated as your damage, uh, which was the five or six missing shingles on your roof, and uh, that came out to $1,058, and since you have a $1,000 deductible, here's your $58 check, thank you, goodbye. And... Uh, the person or, or, or my relative that, that had this, uh, you know, situation, they were not satisfied with that, as I don't think anybody should be. Um, and they looked into, you know, getting some uh, additional monies. And when they, when they did their research, they came up with, uh, you know, using the services of a public adjuster. And that's what they did. They reopened the case. <clears throat> And and here's here's a lesson that you know if you're looking at this this is I think the key lesson that you need to take with you. Uh, they reopened the case, and when they did that, uh, they had the same company adjuster, the same claims adjuster from the insurance company, meet up now with the public adjuster, and the public adjuster when he was there um, said, "Well, you know what." We cannot properly seal the roof. Number one, the, the shingles won't match. Number two, we won't properly seal the, the roof from leaks uh, by just sliding, you know, five or six shingles underneath where they're missing and, and just doing a patch-up job. That's not the way things are going to work. Um, number one, there's a lining between the wood and the, the shingle that was damaged that has to be replaced and we cannot just patch that we have to take all the shingles off and do it the right way right patch that up the right way and that means doing that whole slope which means doing all new shingles on that slope which means patching up uh, that interior lining which means looking at the damage of the wood that was underneath there because apparently the water had gone and seeped into the house and gone through the attic and gone through the ceiling and and done you know some damage along the way right so uh we're not just accepting five or six shingles that are going to be placed underneath the house that's not going to work uh number one we can't match the shingles even in color we cannot match it properly and number two like you know i stated you cannot seal that roof properly so that has to be done but here's here's more there's more to it than just that because the water seeping into the attic guess what damaged the attic insulation so now we have to replace the attic insulation it seeped through to the ceiling and and created a water leak and that cre that damaged uh, the ceiling so that means that was a popcorn ceiling this particular person had we need to replace that right so and 
when it went through to the other side of the ceiling and it created a drip, guess what? That drip landed on a wooden floor, which curled up the wooden floor, which means we need to replace the wooden floor. And it's not a matter of replacing two or three of the, you know, uh, 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 two or three pieces of wood on the wooden floor completely because uh, nothing is going to match unless it's done completely. So... Now, the lesson there to be learned is that uh, that company adjuster was there the first time. And now he's agreeing to all the things because uh, that person that originally got a $58 check now on the second go-round, right, got over $9,000, $9,700 to be exact. Now... Did that company adjuster know that those were the damages that were included in that claim? I think he did, because he's not fighting it now, right? They, he uh, that that person recovered nine thousand seven hundred bucks, but they were not offering that information. They were not, you know, giving that information out because you know what the bottom line is the. The policy is written, it is your burden of proof. Your, meaning you, the person that has the policy. If you're claiming against the policy, it is your burden of proof to prove the damages. So, most people do, what most people do is, they uh, call their insurance company and say, Hey, you know, I'm sorry to say, but I had some damage done to my house. Can you come by and, uh, you know, take a look at it? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll send a claims adjuster. And what does the homeowner do? The homeowner goes outside or inside wherever the damage is and takes their their finger and points at the damage and says, There you go. Right there, that's the damage. That's not burden of proof. That's not showing the insurance company that you are well-versed in the fact that the attic insulation got damaged. That uh, the ceiling needs more than just two coats of paint. The ceiling needs to be replaced because it was a popcorn ceiling. And guess what? There was damage and I needed to be replaced back to pre-damaged condition. The floor... Uh, got damaged from the water that came down, and guess what? I need to have that replaced. Now, again, the insurance company adjuster knows all this, but will not volunteer that additional information. It's up to you to prove the burden of proof. So what's the, st what's the moral of the story here? Two things. Two things I want to bring out. Number one is, if you are a person that has had a claim over the last 12 months and number one you were denied or number two you were given a settlement which you were not happy with it behooves you to call me and say hey mike can you do me a favor and check this out can you review this and see if i was treated fairly you have nothing to lose at this point, right? You've already been denied or you've already had a settlement which you are not happy with. And if you don't know how to uh, prove your burden, you're not going to gain anything. You're not going to get anything else back. So allow me to take a look at it. Allow me to, to see if there were some corners cut there, which could mean a lot of money. Here's, here's uh, the second thing. The second thing is that l when I first got wind of this information, exactly the story that I just finished telling you, when I got wind of this information, I said to myself, you know what? That's a great service. That's a great way to, to provide value to the marketplace because think about it, guys. This person got a $58 check and after the services of a public adjuster got 9700 and change right so i mean how much more <laughs> percentage wise did this person get i mean it's ridiculous right and these are the things that go on so here's what i'm going to tell you the next time you're looking at your evening news 
and you see the financial report you know when they start talking about the the, the, the stock market and you're seeing this you, you know uh the stock market bell they they ring the bell every day uh at the end of the the day and that's when you know uh, prior to that you you, you have p uh, companies go up there in the stock market and 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 declare their profits so the next time you see your insurance company up there clapping their hands at the the stock market bell the the close of the of the day there and and declaring 750 million dollars for this quarter only in profits 750 million <laughs> right and they're clapping their hands understand that the insurance company does not make profit paying out claims they make profits collecting premiums they make profits denying claims they make profits shortchanging claims and you know what i'm not vilifying insurance companies their business model is their business model and the fact of the matter is that their policies are written by them to favor them and when you come into an agreement with them there are certain things that you have to abide by but there's also certain things that they have to abide by. But the bottom line is, it is your burden of proof. You have to prove. You have to present your claim the right way. And yes, they will pay you. They don't argue it. They will pay you. But if you do not present it the right way, the claims adjuster will not offer that additional information. He may agree to it the second time around without a fight. But the fact of the matter is he will not say hey by the way did you know that your insulation in the attic was damaged yeah we need to pay you for that you didn't know that did you yeah <laughs> they're not gonna say that all right they're not gonna tell you that your ceiling needs to be replaced rather than just two layers of paint that's what they're gonna tell you ah we can patch that up no problem we could be, oh, are you kidding me? Two layers of paint. As a matter of fact, one layer. You'll be fine. Right? They're not going to tell you that that drip on the floor automatically, automatically sets you up for a new floor. Chances are you're not going to be able to find that wood. Right? If you have wooden floors, chances are very, I mean, how do you match that up? Right? <laughs> How do you put that back in? I mean, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen how they lay these floors down, but they lay these floors systematically, and it goes, you know, there's a certain way that you have to lay the floor in order to, for it to fall properly. You just can't patch that up, all right? And you can't patch up a roof. You, you just can't slide some, some uh, shingles, missing shingles, in a spot. You just can't do it. It doesn't seal right doesn't look right right the problem is when you try to sell the house the next buyer is going to come by and say hey look at that roof there what what happened with the roof oh i uh had some shingles fall off and uh you know my insurance company gave me enough so that i could just patch it up nah that ain't gonna work guys that's gonna lower the value of your property and and the bottom line is if you allow it to happen they will go that route they like this this person uh this family member they will go that route so uh, again if you two things and i just <laughs> i'm going to end it with this if you see an opportunity uh it, if you see the value in becoming a public adjuster we we train people to do that i train people to do that and we look forward to helping you get licensed and started making money as a public adjuster helping other people there's a huge demand and if you're a homeowner that has had your uh a, a, a policy that was denied or a policy that was underpaid we can help you let, let us take a look pick up the phone call me up and say hey mike this happened all right and I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not certain I was, I was treated fairly, or, or I was denied when, uh, you know, when I attempted to do this. A lot of times, denied claims, uh, you know, uh, just happen to be denied because you said one thing wrong. 
All right, and that's why we tell people, listen, don't don't pick up the phone and talk to that friendly customer service because that friendly customer service knows exactly what he can do to manipulate the conversation, to steer the conversation in a certain way so that you answer questions that may not be to your favor. All right, that may not that may not support your claim. And that's the key. Right. If you're saying something uh that doesn't support your claim boom denied that stamp comes down right (laughs) and you'd be surprised how often that happens all right guys so my name is mike martinez i am the guy that you want to go to and if you had had any of these issues in the past 12 months contact me if you're if i sparked your interest as far as seeing an opportunity you see the value in what we're doing here and you want to be involved we can train you we can get you licensed we can get you started and that's what we do okay so pick up the phone get in contact speak to you next time